Okay, I've got a Capture One tutorial for you guys. This will be the latest in our sponsored series from Capture One. And I want to talk about something a little more advanced today. We're going to talk about adjustment layers and masking. So when you bring an image into a photo editor, in this case, Capture One, usually the first thing you do are you make some adjustments. For instance, you might tweak the exposure a little bit. You might try to bring back some highlight detail, bring up your shadows, get your contrast just right. And we're going to use sliders to do those things. We call those global adjustments because they affect everything in the image. When I just move the exposure, it affects the overall all exposure. So this is great for a first pass. But let's say you're going to go back through and you want to draw attention to your subject a little better and you want to adjust the lighting. Now those are not global adjustments. You want to isolate something and do something specific. So this is where masking comes in and we're going to use layer adjustments in Capture One to make this happen. So let's go over and check this out. So I've got an image open here and if you look over on the adjustment panels here I'm going to click the exposure tab and the first thing you're going to see is I've got my histogram on the top but you should have layers right underneath that and we don't have any layers set up right now. You just see background. Background represents what we've got. So any adjustments I make will affect the background layer. Now, what I can do for my secondary adjustments is if I click on the plus sign here, I'm gonna create a new layer. Now there's several different layer types that you can do. The default is adjustment, and that's what we're gonna be focusing on in this video. You've also got cloning and healing, but we'll cover those separately. Uh, but anyway, I've created a new layer. I can double click on this to name this, and I'll call this uh, demo layer for lack of a completely unique name here and uh, what we're going to do is work with this layer so this allows me to draw a mask on this layer to isolate something in the image and then any adjustments that I now make to this layer only affect what's under the mask and so to draw a mask what you're going to do is on the top here uh, you're going to select the brush tool you can also hit the letter B on the keyboard and it brings up uh, this circular cursor with a plus sign in the middle and if I right click anywhere in the image it'll bring up my settings and I can adjust the size. I can make it smaller, I can make it bigger. I can adjust the hardness, the opacity, and the flow so you can get this really smooth looking. Uh, and then I also have some options that we'll talk about in a second under here. And so I'm just gonna grab a brush and just for our demo sake here, I'm just going to paint. And when I paint on the image, you're going to see a red mask appear. And that is everything that is going to be masked out. And so if you don't see that for whatever reason, you can use the letter M on the keyboard, stands for mask, and that will toggle the mask on on and off. So right now it's on. If I hit the letter M, it will turn it off. And uh, we have made a mask adjustment. So what I can do now that that's off, anything that I do to uh, adjust this layer is going to only show up underneath the mask. So for instance, if I bring the exposure up, you're going to see that it becomes bright under the mask. I can also do things like bring my white balance over and maybe warm that up. This is really ugly. I'm just using it for our sake of demonstration, but that's the idea. You have a mask and when I make adjustments to that layer, the adjustments only affect what's under that mask. Let's see what this looks like in a more practical application here. So I've got another image. This is an image I shot in New York City about a month or two ago and it's a street photography scene. I've already done some work on this and let me show you what I've done. So this is the way the image came in originally and what the problem is here is our subject which is this guy in the middle is just too dark. I don't get any detail out of him and so the problem is is that I want to draw the eye into him but if I make a global adjustment and I just grab the overall exposure on the image and bring that up yeah I can see him now but I also way over blew the rest of the image and it's just kind of this was shot on a cloudy day so it's just how my lighting worked out so what I did is I drew a mask around my subject here and I just used the brush tool to do this one thing that will help you when you're just painting freehand like this is if you right click using the brush tool it gives you an option that says auto mask and what this does is it helps you because capture one's going to analyze the image it's going to look at where you're painting your mask and it's going to look for edge contrast so it's going to see hey I'm painting this dark jacket but there's a lot of detail it's much brighter behind him and so it keeps you in check and the mask doesn't necessarily have to be perfect you can make adjustments to that we'll get into in one second but I drew the mask and I was able to make him a little bit brighter the second thing that I did is unfortunately I'm not going to control the scene here but this guy I would prefer that he have not have been there but he was and he's also a little bright and so what I did is I did a second mask on this gentleman and let's show you that one I'll select him and I basically brought the exposure down and the contrast down a little little bit. So these are minor adjustments, but I'm able to do them selectively with two subjects in the frame and especially with this guy in the front and it didn't take much. All I did was increase the contrast and the exposure and it makes him pop a lot more than, let's toggle the mask, than before. So that is a really great application just using the paintbrush tool to make a mask. Now there are other things that we can do with this too. Maybe you don't want to do a lot of painting, but there's other things that you can do in a more sweeping manner and one of them is using the gradient tool. This is a landscape image that I made in 
California, right outside of Carmel by the Sea. And one of the problems that you're going to have sometimes in landscapes, particularly when the sun is low, the sun is right behind these clouds here. So I have a really high contrast. The storm is blowing in, it's moody lighting, and it's fun to work with, but you're going to have extremes. So we have really bright brights up here. In fact, we've got detail that's just blown out in the sky. And then I start losing a lot. Now, I like the moodiness of the rocks and the water over here, and I've just made a couple global adjustments. I bumped up the contrast, I lowered the exposure a little bit, and I brought the white balance over so it's a little more warm. And the problem that I have is while I like the lower part of this image, I don't like my sky. The sky is kind of flat. It's a little bit boring. It doesn't really match the drama. So I want to be able to bring that down. So we're going to use an adjustment layer and a mask to do this. Now I could create the adjustment layer. Let's call this sky so we know what it is. And I could just grab the paintbrush and start painting up there. But there's an easier way to do it. So what I want to do is I'm going to draw a gradient mask. And when you draw a gradient mask, if you go up on the top here and if you don't see it, it's it, sometimes we're just under the brush. It's under there on the triangle. I'm going to go ahead. You can also use the letter G on the keyboard. We're going to draw a linear gradient mask. So let me show you what this does. So when I click and drag just to pull it down here, uh, let's hit the letter M to display the mask. And you're going to see that it's a red mask, but it's linear. So it's darkest at the top and it starts to fade out as we go. So this is a true gradient. Another thing that I'm going to do, let's delete that or undo it. And I'm going to redo this. If you hold down the shift key on your keyboard, this is a modifier that will keep everything straight. So I'm going to hold down shift, draw it again, and it's perfectly straight from top to about the middle of the image. And now whatever adjustments I make under this mask will have a gradient. They'll smooth out as it goes to the bottom. Let's bring the exposure down and we get a little more drama already. Maybe bring the contrast up just a little bit, bring the exposure down a little more. Now I've got a moodier, more interesting sky. The problem that I have though is that it doesn't look natural in the way that it hit these rocks over here. That does not look like natural lighting. And so what are our options here? What can we do? Well, I could rasterize this, grab the eraser tool and actually go paint through the rocks, but that's going to be way too much work and not something I'm interested in doing. But one other thing that we can do is use the Luma range tool. So with the sky selected, you're going to see Luma range. It's a button right over the top of the layers here. If I select that, this allows us to limit the mask to a certain light range. So your darks are going to be over on the left, highlights are on the right. So if I grab these sliders and you can tail them off to kind of smooth them out a little bit. And if, notice when I start bringing that over, it starts taking the mask out of the rocks over there. And it's a little milky looking. That's too much. Let's bring it back. Really only affecting the sky here. What I want to do is I want to extend this toe out just a little bit more to smooth that out. There we go. Now I have less problem going dark on the hills over here. Now the problem that I have is I've also blown highlights and by default the Luma range actually brings you in a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to get all the brights. So let's go ahead and grab that handle and move it all the way over. Now you can see that our highlights are no longer blown out. Let's hit apply and it's a really cool way to go. You can also, let's go back to Luma range again. Another thing I was going to show you is you can say display mask. So while you're working on it, you can see what it's doing. There's two more sliders that you can do here. There's radius and sensitivity. And the radius essentially is going to cover how close to an edge something is. Sensitivity is a little more like feathering. So you can really go in here and smooth this out and work with it. I actually might want to come out a little more on some of my... There we go. Now I can see the green back in here again. So yeah, anyway, so we can finesse this as much as we want. I'll go ahead and hit apply and uh, we have got ourselves a landscape. So that was the linear gradient, which basically makes your gradient follow a line. There's also a radial gradient, which puts everything into a circle. Let me give you an application for using the radial gradient tool. So I have this image of a model that I shot and the problem that I have is she's kind of backlit. So that's problem number one. And as a result, her face is just a little too dark here. So if I go ahead and I'm going to already create the adjustment layer. We're going to create a layer called face. And if you go back under the tool palette, click on that little triangle, we have the linear gradient mask selected. We're going to go to the radial, or you can use the shortcut of the letter T on your keyboard. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just go ahead and draw, and I'm going to make a circle here. Let's put it over her face. Now, a couple things that I can do to modify this. I can actually bring that out. I can make it more of a fade make it less of a fade in the middle. You can adjust this accordingly. It's probably way too big. Let's bring it in and I'm going to bring it up a little bit. 
All right, that's starting to look better. So now what I'm gonna do is that's where our mask is. Let's hit the letter M so you can see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, let's bring the exposure up so we can brighten her up just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. I'm going to bring the contrast down a little bit because she looks a little phony just as I brought that up. And the other thing that I can do is actually go into the color tab. And I'm gonna move my white balance over and give her face a little more color just by bringing it more towards the tungsten end of things. And uh, that's starting to look pretty good. So quick before and after, there's before, there's after. I've brought her very much more prominent in the composition here. The other thing I might do is this is just really weird lighting. We were under this scaffolding and notice how we have kind of a dark gradient at the bottom. So let's add another layer. Uh, I just don't like it down here where we're, you know, kind of, it's, it's just too dark and it's also cool because our color temperature is mixed. So let's call this bottom, so I know what it is. Naming your layers is actually very important guys. So on the bottom, I'm going to go back to my gradient tool and let's just draw a gradient here. I'm going to eyeball that. Doesn't need to be perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the exposure tab. Let's bring the exposure up just a little bit. So it's just doesn't, not too dark and strange down there. The other thing I could probably do is go back to your color tab because it starts going a little blue in terms of the light color down there. So let's warm that up just a little bit too. Not too much. There we go. Now we have a much more even image to work with. So those are two ways that we can very quickly, I didn't have to paint anything, I didn't have to use the brush, but we were able to go in, just use the radial gradient and the linear gradient, just to draw your eye the right way into the image and make the subject pop just a little bit. There's one other trick that I want to show you too, and I actually did this in advance because it's really ugly on this lens that I used. So I'm going to go in here, let's zoom in, and I'm going to turn off the layer that covered this up, but you can see that this lens suffers from some pretty bad chromatic aberration. And this is a problem that just exists in some lenses, uh, particular older ones, but this isn't that old a lens, but it's here and it's we call this fringing. And you're gonna see kind of these green lines on high contrast areas. There's two types of fringing that you're gonna see, two types of aberrations. The other one is a magenta. Now, the way Capture One works, if I go over to the Lens tab here, Capture One will correct for purple defringing, and you have a slider here if you want to take care of more of it or less of it. My problem here is I have the other type of fringing. I have the green one, and there's no easy slider just for correcting that. So a little trick that you can do here is we can actually make a mask by selecting a color range. Let's show you how this is done. So I've turned the layer off where I used to correct that. Let's create another one, and uh, let's call this CA, Chromatic Aberration 2. And I will show you how it works here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go down uh, make sure you're under the color tab. If you go down to the bottom to the color editor, default is basic, go to advanced. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the color picker, select that, and that's the tool. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna select the green. We're just gonna select a little bit of green and it automatically put that on our color wheel. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to expand this just slightly. I'm gonna bring it out a little bit more down there. Now, I could go in and just desaturate the greens, but I would rather make a mask out of this, and I'll show you why in a second. But I'm gonna click on the three little dots here for the options, and I'm going to say, create masked layer from selection. So as soon as I click that, it's going to do some thinking. It's gonna analyze, go through the entire image and look for all of the weird green fringing. And it's going to create a mask out of that. So now when I hit the letter M, by the way, it created a new mask for me. So let's delete the CA2. Let's uh, rename this one CA2. There we go. It creates the mask for you too. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is hit the letter M to toggle and you're gonna say, whoa, look at all this green it got. You can also see that it got a lot of green that is not part of the fringing and that's just because it's green. And so that's represents one of the problems. Now, this is why I created a mask because I can go in here really easily now and I can grab my, let's see, let's grab the eraser tool, E on the keyboard, or you can select it from the top menu and let's make that much bigger. I can use the eraser tool and now I can just bring it all out of these areas where I don't want it, I can get it out of her dress. And so this allows me to have some control over what in the image is actually being impacted. So once I have that cleaned up, you can see that we're really gonna target the green fringing that just happens in these high contrast areas here. So the way I'm gonna deal with that is we have our new layer created, I have it selected. And remember adjustments will adjust what's under the mask. So the easiest way to deal with this is go back to the exposure panel and just desaturate. So let me turn the masking off so we, we see it as it goes. It's green, I'm going to just 
move the saturation slider over and voila, we have just corrected our green fringing problem on this lens. So there's a quick before and after. Here's the original image. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how it was originally when it came in. We brought her face up a little more and we also eliminated the chromatic aberration and then also lightened up the bottom. So this is about four different ways here that I've shown you that you can go in and you can make local adjustments to various parts of the image where you want to draw the eye in. You either want to make them lighter, darker, change the color, various adjustments that you might want to do. And so we even got rid of chromatic aberration with one of them. So this is very powerful. You can have multiple layers stacked up. Of course, Capture 120 will now allow you to cut and paste layers and adjustments over to second images. So this is great if you have variations on an image that you're working with and you don't want to do the work again. But there's a set of tools in here. You can just draw a mask using the brush. You can use the eraser. You can use a gradient tool like the linear or the radial. It allows you to work really quickly. And I think this paired with the Luma range tool just makes work so much more fast and so much more easy. Would love to know what you guys think. Drop me a comment below. Until the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later.